What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the CFBPod.com show. I am one of the hosts, Donovan White, here to do another video, kind of continuing our series of bold predictions. And I wanted to give three bold predictions real quick for the Arizona football program going into 2024. Before I get into it, though, if you haven't yet, please subscribe on the YouTube channel. You can see the information going down below for other channels. But subscribe on YouTube. Like this video if you if you think it's good. Give me a comment on any of your bold predictions, Arizona fans or, or Big 12 fans. And again, follow me on Twitter at DonnieMac98. Follow the show on Twitter at CFBPod.com and other hosts, as you can see down below. But let's get into it. So this is an Arizona team that I'm really excited about. Um, I will, you know, myself and the other hosts will we'll do a video previewing them fully, going through their full schedule, um, game by game, position by position. But just in terms of bold predictions, I wanted to give three for today and, and get your take on it, Arizona fans. So, again, leave a comment on the video. Let me know what you think. Let me know your level of excitement because I know mine for Arizona is pretty high. But the first one being, and again, I might butcher his name a little bit, uh, but wide receiver Tetsaroya McMillan finishes the season with less yards. He had 1,200 last season, but more touchdowns. Uh, he is a guy that, I mean, what can you say about him? I think I think he's going to finish with about 15 touchdowns uh, this upcoming season. And I misspoke. I think he had more than 1,200 yards. I think he'll have around 1,200 yards receiving this season. I think he'll have 15 touchdowns. But the kid's an absolute freak. He's six foot five. He's a fluid route runner, and he catches everything thrown to him. Um, it, you know, he is probably he's debatably the best returning wide receiver in college football for the twenty twenty four season, and he's undoubtedly going to be a top ten, maybe top twelve, depending on how the rest of the position classes break down in the in the twenty twenty five NFL draft. But McMillan is is a kid that. You see he's got all the talent in the world. He's got all the intangibles. He's got the frame. He's got the production. And he's got the supporting cast around him, namely at quarterback, which I'll get into here in a second with my second bold prediction. And that's that quarterback Noah Fafita finishes the, finishes the season as a Heisman Trophy finalist. And look, I'm not saying he's going to win it because there's a lot of quarterbacks out there that are also talented some that i would debate are, are more talented than i don't think that's anything wrong to say you know anything wrong with saying but the numbers he put up as a freshman are pretty absurd 72 percent completion rate over th or nearly three thousand yards passing 25 touchdowns to only six interceptions he's got a top tier receiver in mcmillan like we just talked about to throw to and to catch everything that comes his way and he'll only have another offseason of development and coaching um, to take his game to the next next level. And, and I know I think people underestimate sometimes for any position in football, but as, especially at quarterback, the importance of having an offseason as a starter, but also having game experience. It, it's not like there's one over the other. You can make an argument that one could be more important than the other, depending on what league you're in, you know, what your experience was, what it, whatever it may be. But he now has the experience of a season of the starter as a starter. And now he's going to get a full off season program that includes winter conditioning, winter strength training, and leading the team as a starter throughout spring ball, then going into summer practices where they, you know, you, you don't have full practices really up until camp, but uh, spoiler alert, they're running the offense and, and they're doing things, you know, outside of the NCAA bylaws and, and guidelines and things like that. And another summer of, you know, training, conditioning, everything like that. So he's a guy that is ultra talented. Uh, I think he's one of the – he's developing into one of the elite quarterbacks of college football. I think you start to see glimpses of it. And when you see glimpses that early as a freshman and you have – you know he's got a returning cast coming back at offensive line, at running back, specifically at wide receiver, uh, you can only be excited for what he's building towards going into this season. And then third – is is probably the most bold and, and uh, again this is bold predictions for a reason but my bold prediction my third one is that the Arizona Wildcats win the Big 12 championship in year 1 and i know this one is bold first year head coach in a new conference and they win the whole thing sign me up when you have an elite quarterback and again that's just what seems to be the trajectory of no fita because Last season as a freshman, he played like a top, I would debate top 12, top 15 quarterback in college football if you put a gun in my head and ask me. But when you have an elite quarterback, 
in college football, anything is possible, really. I mean, having an elite quarterback by itself can make up for a lot of different things or a lot of different deficiencies on your team. And I don't think Arizona has a ton of deficiencies on their team. And I also don't think they play in some juggernaut conference. I don't think that's the Big 12. You know, if they're in the SEC or Big 10, this would be a whole different conversation. But I think they drop a game to Utah early in the season. But I think they end up beating them in the Big 12 championship. Now, tiebreakers could be different things, and, and Utah might not get there. But I think that they lose to Utah early in the season just because Utah is a little bit more of a seasoned, experienced team. Assume Cam Rising is going to be healthy and playing at least somewhat close to what we've we've seen from him. So you've got that experience and maturity level that's a little different from Kyle Whittingham's team and Cam Rising than it is to know Fita and his Arizona team. Uh, but I, I do end up think that they will beat them, Utah specifically, in the Big 12 championship and finish the season 12-1 and one and lock in a college ball playoff berth, which, again, let's say that bold prediction is doesn't even come to full fruition. They don't win the Big 12 championship. I still like this team as a college ball playoff contender. You don't have to win the, the, the championship anymore to be in this elite stage of, of college, the college ball playoffs. Arizona could easily – go to the Big 12 championship and lose it and be 11-2, and two, and they'd still make it. They could just be out on the outside range for whatever weird tiebreaker happens or weird way around that it works and be 11-1, and one, and they'd probably still make the college ball playoff or, or come damn close. So those are my three bold predictions. Again, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Arizona fans, I really want to get your take on this because – they are a team that I'm super excited for when I dive deeper into the Big 12 and when I dive deeper into college ball in general. So let me know what you think in the comments. Again, make sure you subscribe on YouTube to the CFBpod.com show. Follow me on Twitter at DonnieMac98. Uh, but for the network and for the show, I will see you all next time. 